We're going to study now uh, reactions of aldehydes and ketones with nitrogen nucleophile. These nucleophiles are nitrogen nucleophiles, say primary amines. Remember that in amines, uh, if you think ammonia and replace one of the H's by an R group, you have a primary amine. And we also have other nucleophiles, secondary amines. So if I have two of the H's replaced by R groups, that is a secondary amine. Right. So we will see those uh, reactions. And um, R's can be different things. Uh, other, um, we can have, for example, this. Here, instead of an alkyl group, we have uh, an OH. So this is particular amine is called hydroxylamine. We also have uh, another nucleophile here. Has to finish to imagine that this is your R, one of these. So this is hydrazine in derivatives of that. What are we making with those? So it, the general um, uh, result, let's say, if I have a carbonyl compound such as acetone and I make it react with a primary amine, that will form an imine. That reaction can also, it means can be hydrolyzed back to the carbonyl under acidic conditions. So that's similar to the case of acetals, which we saw earlier. Now, if you have a, not a primary amine, but a secondary amine as your reagent, so now we're using two R groups in only one end, the product is not an amine. Instead, we're forming an N-amine. And we're going to see in a minute why is that. And so that we remember to use that to predict products. So, and I mean. And again, this is reversible acidic conditions. You can hydrolyze enamine back to the carbonyl group. All right. So, uh, now we need to go and explain what will be the result and why is that. Uh, the other cases, this is like a primary amine, only that the R group is an OH. So if I use hydroxylamine here as your nucleophile, say NH2OH, what you form is very uh, similar to that, like an amine, but this case, you have a double bond, and I'm going to put the OH on that side. This is called an oxime. But um, it's similar, you see the structure to the amine. If we use hydrazine, so we will do the same ketone, and now I'm using uh, NH2, NH2 hydrazine. We still form um, this double bond with nitrogen, and I'm going to have an NH2 here, which is similar to that. But that is called a hydrazone. And in these reactions, you make uh, the imine or the enamine, depending if you're reacting with, um, making the carbonyl react with a primary amine or a secondary. And the reaction is reversible. You can hydrolyze imine, I uh, means to uh, the carbonyl compound or enamines back to the carbonyl compound under acidic condition. Now I'm gonna go over um, the mechanism to show ways that. Um, so these are your nucleophiles. So the essentially, uh, what is important um, when we're looking at those reactions and we have to do problems predicting uh, what's going to happen. Important to keep in mind that nitrogen nucleophiles means when you do this reaction, you work at a pH between four and five. That's the optimal rate for the pH. Uh, it, uh, the pH, when the pH is moderately acidic, you can have um, that protonation, say, uh, some 
but not extremely acidic. But you can form this. And this species is more electrophilic. Remember that here you can draw a resonance structure. And in that resonance structure, the carbon is positive. And so acid catalysis make the this carbon, the carbon and carbon more electrophilic. Stronger electrophile is faster, right? Now, but on the other hand, if I had too much hydronium, um, something will happen, which is the acid-base reaction. So if I have excess of hydronium, a lot of that, I will form this species will protonate the amino, and that is not nucleophilic. So too strongly acid, I don't have a nucleophile. Some acidic condition, yes, is uh, useful because I will have the oxygen protonated and make more electrophilic. So that's why we want that pH. But we wonder why not higher pH? Well, under more basic conditions, then I don't form that. I will have all of these as free amine, but I don't have like a catalysis. So uh, in different books, you will see mechanism involving direct attack here. Or you will also see the alternate um, mechanism. So we can do that. Or we can have this species, is the carbon is more electrophilic, but the nucleophile is still the same. See, remember that this species is not nucleophilic. This is a nucleophile. That's why we cannot make it too acidic. So if we go from here in after the nucleophilic attack, I will have here OH, and then I'm going to have here N and R and H and H and plus. That is a formal positive charge. So we need a proton transfer step. Uh, the same amine can act, uh, here is acting as nucleophile, but we can have it as acting as base to remove that H. We look for now an intermediate that has OH, and um, that is called a carbonyl amine. So we have the OH in the amino group, carbonyl amine. The carbonyl amine then uh, will undergo a dehydration. For that, we need a proton transfer step here. So under mildly acidic conditions, you will have now the OH protonated, and that would make it a better living group. And now I will do this. And this is the dehydration step. Uh, the dehydration step will form me. I'm going to make the arrow shorter. I'm going to form these intermediate with H and R. And that is formal positive. We're not at the immediate. yet. We need an extra proton transfer step. And again, we can have um, the amino or even water acting as base to remove the extra H here. Final product is the imine. All right. So what happens when you have a secondary, I mean, I'm not going to draw the whole mechanism, but um, first let's stress that this is, all of that is reversible. And so we can hydrolyze the uh, imine back to the carbonate. Now, in the case, notice that we have two steps that involve proton transfer. Uh, here, you're removing, let's highlight that. You're removing this H, uh, one of the H's of the primary amine, and to make the carbonyl amine. Then you do this proton transfer step, but we have this intermediate here that has an extra H and the nitrogen is formal positive. So we're removing the second H. So that will happen when the amine is primary. You have the two H's. But when the amine is secondary, we're gonna, we're gonna go up to that step, but then we can no longer have that. So just abbreviating the mechanism, I'm going to 
have something like that. But with the, this time, I'm going to draw. Now, the what would be the cardinal amine if I had a secondary uh, amine? No, I no longer have an H here. I will have two R groups. That is the case of a secondary amine. So I'm redrawing that this is um, using this. So secondary amine. The carbonyl amine will have this form. And when you do this, a proton transfer, you form a species that's now different. The carbonyl amine, now you no longer have an H. So the new carbonyl amine is this. And after, when you remove, you do this in, say, pushing the water out, you're going to form the following intermediate. That will have a double bond here in R and R. So I cannot do a proton transfer, no longer have a proton. So what is different in the secondary amines is that now since I, I need to do an elimination of one H, so it's going to happen at a carbon nearby. So here you can have, say, for example, water action in space. You will remove the hydrogen next to that and do the following. That way, you, the elimination happens here, and you will form this compound, and this is what we call the enamine. So then, free cap. If you have a primary amine, you will form an imine, and that is R. That is imine. There are two proton transfer steps um, that you remove to H's, let's say, in the mechanism that we just saw. But if you have a secondary amine, since you only have one H, after this step, you need to remove uh, one H to the elimination with one hydrogen next to the double bond, and you form an enemy. Important here that both of these compounds can be hydrolyzed back to the carbonyl. When you do the hydrolysis of um, imine, it will hydrolyze to the carbonyl plus the primary amine. If you hydrolyze an enemy, you will go back to the carbonyl and the secondary amine.